In this video we're going to look at converting linear equations to standard form. <clears throat> if you look at the equation that I've written here, ax plus by equals c, that's a linear equation in standard form. Uh, if we graphed it, it would be a straight line and the variables x and y are both raised to the power of 1. Each, each of them are raised to the power of 1, x to the power of 1, y to the power of 1. These are things that we look for in a linear equation. The graph is a straight line, the variables are all power of 1. So what are these things a, b, and c? How come I say there's only two variables x and y? a and b and c are letters, right? But it turns out the a and the b and the c are actually just constants. They're actually, they're going to be numbers. We just kind of write, the, write it out this way so that we know that if we see something in this form with a number and then an x and then a number and then a y and then an equal and then a number, that that's the standard form for a linear equation. Now there's other forms for linear equations. You might be familiar with uh, this one. Um, go to our, our, our old favorite uh, y equals m x plus b. Again, we have a y and an x, and then these other numbers. m stands for some other number, and b stands for some other number. But the only variables are x and y. Anyways, let's get back to the um, standard form that we're talking about now. So, uh, let's say we have something like, uh, well, first of all, let's talk about the rules. Uh, the rules that we have, rules, for uh, standard form uh, are that uh, a must be greater than zero um, and uh, b uh, let's see here oh um, a b and c must all be integers must be integers So what does that mean? Well, integers integers are uh, numbers that uh, are not in in fraction form, and they're not in decimal form. Uh, they they uh, another way we think tend to think of this is that they're whole numbers, except whole numbers are only positive and zero. So uh, when we say a, b, and c are integers, it means that b and c could be negative numbers. Now a we already said is going to be greater than zero. So A is going to be positive. But A, B, and C must be integers. So B and C can be uh, whole numbers or their opposites. Um, let's see, there's another rule that says um, <coughs> the equation must be, so there's rule one, rule two. Another rule says that um, the equation must be fully reduced. So if there is a greatest common factor amongst terms in the equation, then we must divide through everything through by the greatest common factor and reduce the equation as much as we can. And I'll show you an example of that. So let's take a look at an example. Um, here is an equation. This is a linear equation. If we graphed it, it would be a straight line. You don't have to take my word for it. You could plug in values of x, calculate values of y, and uh, and then put them on a graph. You'd see it's a straight line. Also, x is power of one, y is power of one. So the problem here is is that it's not in the form that we we, we want to see this. We want to see ax plus by equals c. So we got to convert these guys to that form. So what we'll do is we'll subtract 3x from both sides of the equation, the both sides of the equal sign. So that gets us negative 3x plus 2y equals 5. If I just subtract 3x from here and from here, I get negative 3x plus 2y equals 5. I could write it as 2y minus 3x, but remember we want ax plus by equals c. Now. Another little problem that we run into here is if you recall there's a rule that says a must be greater than zero or positive. Well here's our a. See, see where the a is? Well it's right here also and it's a negative number. So one thing that we can do to correct that is we'll multiply both sides of the equation by a negative one. 
and we have to multiply everything on both sides of the equation by negative 1 if we want to multiply anything on either side by negative 1. So we'll distribute this guy to here and to there and so that gets us uh, positive 3x uh, minus 2y equals negative 5. And that pretty much does it. That's, that's exactly what we were looking for. That gets us ax plus by equals c with a being positive. Now there's some other tricky little things so I'm going to show you another example here in just a sec. Now in this next example, example 2, we see that we have uh, the a is not an integer. Uh, integers are, are, are not written in fraction form. This is a fraction. So um, this guy we need to uh, we need to go ahead and get rid of that. And, uh, and then also the negative 3 fourths in front of the y is not an integer. We're looking for whole numbers and their opposites. It's okay that the y is negative, but it's not okay that it's 3 fourths. And the same with the 2 fifths. Now, one way that we can go ahead and get rid of these fractions is we can do a procedure known as fraction busting. And in fraction busting, what you do is you multiply everything by the, um, the least common denominator. And the least common denominator between these two is going to be 20. So I'm going to go ahead and multiply both fractions by 20. To make this legal, we have to use a property of equality known as the multiplication property of equality that says if I multiply one side of an equation by a number, then I have to multiply the other side of the equation by that number. Over here we'll distribute. Good old distributive property. And when we do 20 times 2 fifths, um, why don't you pause it for a second and see if you can do that one in your head. That would be great. And then uh, also do the 20 times th the negative 3 fourths. Pause it for a second and then I'll show you what you got to do. Okay, so 20 times 2 fifths, the 5 and the 20 cancel, so that gets me 4 times 2, so that should be 8x. And then 3 fourths times 20, the 4 and the 20 cancel, that gets me 5 times 3, so negative 15y. And on the other side we get 120. So yay, uh, we did this thing called fraction busting, it looks like it worked pretty well. My only concern would be is sometimes when we do fraction busting, we, we still need to reduce. So double check and see if this can be reduced, and in this case it looks like it cannot. There's no common factor that I could divide everything by. So we'll say that we're done with this equation for now. So let's take a look at another uh, type of equation that you might want need to convert to standard form. So in example three, the problem that we have is that uh, the a is not an uh, integer and b is not an integer and c is not an integer. So we got to fix everything. So the first thing that I'm going to do here is get rid of the, the fraction. Well, you know what? I'm going to get rid of these decimals first. Um, one way we can go ahead and get rid of those decimals is we'll multiply everything on the left-hand side by the number 10. If I do that, this point 0.3 just becomes 3. And we're fortunate that we also only have one decimal place on the right-hand side we're going to have to multiply this side of the equation by 10 also. And when we do that, we get rid of this decimal as well. And the 1.2 times 10 becomes 12. So don't forget over here, we got to distribute. And when we do, we get, uh, this will be uh, 20 over 3 times x minus 3 times y equals 1 point, uh, I'm sorry, equals 12. Let's get, of that, get rid of that point. So now we, uh, this is an integer. Negative 3 is an integer. That's good. Um, only a has to be positive, so we don't have to worry about b. Um, 12 is an integer, so we're good, but we still got to get rid of this 3. So the way we'll fix that is we will go ahead and multiply both sides of the equations by 3. And when we do, we get uh, 20x minus 9y, don't forget to distribute, um, equals 36. So yay, we did it. Uh, and again, we, we check, we look and see, is there anything here that we could, div could we divide all of these by the same number? If we can, then do it. Try to reduce it if at all possible. In this case, we cannot reduce, so we're good.
Um, let me just show you one example of where we reduce so that you have that example for your records. So in example four, here's, here's uh, something that looks like it's in standard form, but in order for it to be technically in standard form according to the book and on your test, we, we need to get rid of the greatest common factor. So the way we'll do that here, uh, I made it kind of an easy problem. We can see that there's a greatest common factor here of three and here of three and here of three. So we'll get rid of that by dividing through by three and when we do, voila, we get x plus 2y equals 3. And yay, we are so happy. We did it. We got the linear equation into standard form. Uh, and in the other videos, uh, you'll see that one of the reasons we get these equations into standard form is because it's fairly easy to graph if we um, use the intercepts, the x and the y intercept. You'll see that in a minute. Anyways. That's it for now.